I'm praying that this works tonight. I'm in the basement. So um, my dad, my dad's, I, at my dad's, I have my scanning cut stuff in the basement. And it was going to save me a lot of time to try this in the basement. Well, tried dropping a cord down the stairs, plugging it into the laptop. Well, it wasn't working tonight. Worked this afternoon. <laughs> did not work tonight. So, um, so hopefully I'm on a wireless card. So I hope I'm okay. Looks like people are finding me though. So awesome. It looks like people are coming in. So anyway, I pray that this works. We'll see how this goes. I'm actually pretty close to the router. It's just at the top of the stairs. So I'm only about 20 feet from the router. So I'm praying that <laughs> <laughs> with it being in the basement, it'll still be okay. So anyway, I, um, I hope everybody's doing well. And uh, we're going to do a little scan and cut fun tonight. So um, looks like people are here coming in. I'm, as soon as I turn this way, I'll be able to see better who's here. So um, oh, hi, Shannon. So 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 far, everything's been working on the wireless. So we'll see. Hopefully, <laughs> we can get through this. But this is the basement. You can see my lovely car siding <laughs> in the behind me here. And uh, the uh, dad's basement, actually, I, I spent a lot of time in the basement as a kid. This is kind of where I hung out. And so I've been down here a lot because it's cooler down here, too. So but my scanning cuts here and it's nice because I have a nice workspace down here. Um, so you get to see a different place. Hopefully the air conditioner is not too distracting. Um, I'm pretty close to the air conditioner also. So. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and turn off the little banner here. Give me a second. And then I wanted to, okay, so what we're going to do tonight, let me go back to my comments. What we're going to do tonight is we're going to talk about um, the rotary auto blade. So the rotary auto blade came out about a year ago, and um, it's, a, it's a new blade for the scanning kit. And it, and it literally, I don't know if you can see it very well, it literally has like a little teeny tiny little rotary cutter on the bottom. And it works real well for cutting most anything, um, especially with, with fabrics or, you know, we've always wanted to cut felt with our scan and cut. And when you have a blade, you know, that's cutting through things this way, the blade kind of smushes stuff around and felt is not very stable when it comes to being cut. So this is cool because it rolls over it. So this actually cuts felt very well. So that's what we're going to cut. We're going to cut some felt tonight. We're going to kind of kill two birds with one stone, as I say. Um, next, Not next week. Next week is 4th of July weekend. But the following two weeks, we're going to do the July pillows. And as you notice, these little pillows have lots of little flowers on them. So what we're going to cut tonight is actually the flowers for these little um, these little pillows. They they have what they have you do is actually um, what I want to say. They have you sew it out on the sewing machine and then take scissors and cut around the, the stitches. OK, so I'm going to make these designs into a cutting pattern using the sewing machine. So I'm going to show you that step also. So I'm going to take the designs right from the stick that I was going to sew them upstairs on. Okay. But we don't need to sew them. We're going to cut them instead. So there's these little, little daisy like flowers. And then there's also these little rose roses, these little rose flowers. So there's, there's daisies on this one too, but there's little roses. Okay. So we're going to cut a couple of different ones. Um, out and we're going to take the actual PES file and make it into a cutting file. And the way I do that a lot, I, and there's other ways to do this, but I've done this so many times just using my machine because I'm usually near my machine and I just make it into a cutting file, take it to my scan and cut and cut it. Okay. So hopefully um, this will make sense to you. And if you need me to, in the middle of this, I can show my screen and I'll show you how I did something in the software also. Um, you don't have to do anything in the software to do this, but I did because of the way I wanted to cut these. Um, the, the rotary blade does take a few minutes to cut. It takes longer because it positions a lot. You know, it repositions the stuff in the machine. So um, it does take a little while to cut. 
So while we're cutting, I could go and show you some some computer stuff. So um, let's we'll get started and then I will see how it's going and how you want what you would like me to do. So, OK. All right. So thanks, everybody, for coming in. I can't see your comments quite yet. Some of them I can see. Um, if you haven't already, after the class, go back to this, go to Sew Along with Jan and go back to this video. And at the top of the video, there's going to be a little thing that says you can click there. And it allowed me to see your name that comes through through StreamYard. I can see it on Facebook when I get turned around here, but I can't see your name, some of you, unless you click that. You have to allow um, StreamYard to see your name. Okay, so if you would like me to see your name on StreamYard, go do that after class, okay? All right. Hello, everybody. <laughs> Everybody's coming in. Okay. So give me just a second here. I got to move. I'm going to have to move. I wanted to, um, while this camera was on, I wanted to sit here because my light, I have a nice light up here, but it's very, very bright. And it was, I thought it would blind you. So I'm going to switch the camera down and then I'll move this around to do the next step. So just give me a second here. Let's go ahead and go to the camera that's gonna be on the sewing machine. We're gonna start with that and get the microphone to switch over. Okay, so is everybody still hearing me? Hopefully. Okay, so we're gonna start with the sewing machine. So like I said, the designs that we're going to cut tonight with the rotary blade were um, these little flowers. And they're actually sewing designs. And what they have you do is stitch them out on, on the felt and then take a pair of scissors and cut around the stitching line to cut them out. Okay. So I want to make this so that my scanning cut will cut it for me. And I can use the same design that I'm going to use to sew with. So I've got my USB stick in here that has my designs on it. And there's actually, um, I think there's three designs, actually. So let's see. I think there's three. So on here, yeah, there's three. So here's the little roses. Here's the, there's six little daisies here. Um, when you do the, the, the rectangular pillow, there were four. So they gave you six on this design. And then this design is the three daisies and a little pinwheel that you put on the jar. So um, these daisies and these daisies are actually the same. So I'm just going to do the two designs and not all three. Okay. So we'll do the roses and we'll do these daisies. Okay. So what I'm going to do, so these are PES files. I'm just going to, obviously the machine's reading them. So I'm just going to go grab the, the roses. Okay, so let's grab the roses up here. I'm going to set it. Maybe. And I need to tell the machine, the scanning cut only reads a certain color when it comes to um, cutting. And it has a special color that it knows that is a cutting line. Okay, so we can change that in the sewing machine. If you go to, this is the editing screen on my machine. I've got my 5200 tonight. And you're looking on the editing screen for this little button that looks like a, a thread spool with a bunch of little squares of color. Okay, you're going to touch that. Okay. And then you're going to go to the bottom of the, the main, like, embroidery. This is the brother colors. Oops, I don't think you can quite see. So way down here at the bottom, okay, there's a little color that looks like a pair of scissors with a line on it. And it's called applique material. It doesn't show it written out here on my machine, but it will on the luminaire. Okay. I just happened to have this machine downstairs. And I didn't have to carry my luminaire down. So I'm going to change that design because there's only one color in this design. Okay. Some of the ones may have two, but this one just has one. Okay, so we're just going to change that one color to applique material. And you can see that it changed the color up here. And here's that design with the little, that color with the little scissors on it. So I'm going to go ahead and close this. And then I'm going to, to hit embroidery. And then I'm going to hit memory because I need to save this back to my USB so that I can take it to my scan and cut. So I'm just going to hit memory and I'm going to save it to the USB. 
and it's going to save it on the USB stick. Okay. So I'm done with that. That's all there is to doing this. Now it's a cut file. Okay. So I'm going to hit the little house button and we're going to go do the other one. So I'm going to go back to my USB. We did the roses. So now I'm going to do the um, little daisies, which is this bunch of lines here. Okay. And then I'm going to set it. I'm going to go find the little color button. And then I'm going to go back to my brother colors and go down here where the little scissors and the line is, and that's applique material. Again, I thought we could send. No, we cannot. Um, for those people that have the brand new Scan and Cut and Illuminaire, yes. But no for everybody else. So uh, I don't know who asked that. Who asked that? Jan. Uh, if you have the brand new Scan and Cut Jan and you have the um, brand new um, the Luminaire with the upgrade with the brand new Scan and Cut, then yes. If you if you have an older Scan and Cut, no. But I've been doing this for years and it's so simple. Okay. So here's my applique material. I've changed the color up here. You can see it right here. I'm going to close this. I'm going to go to embroidery and then I'm going to hit in memory. And I'm going to save this back to my USB stick again. Okay, so now my designs are done. There is other ways to do this. One of the ways is if you have PE design, and it only works in PE design, you can change the color in PE design, save it to a stick and bring it to your, to your um, scan and cut. It will not work with Floriani. It will not work with um, the dime because it's not the native format. Okay. So I usually just use the machine. So easy because I have the designs on my stick anyway. And then I just stick them in here, change the colors real quick, and then run to the scan and cut. So see how fast that was? Okay, so now we're done with this part. I'm going to go ahead and hit the little house button. And we're all done with the sewing machine. So I got my two designs on my stick. I'm going to take my stick out now. And then I'm going to twist around here. So I'll be able to see your comments a little bit better now. Um, I'm going to turn around here. And hopefully, I'll make everybody sick by moving the camera. So I'm going to move the camera. And we're going to go over here to the scanning cut. So I have to get it a little bit organized because there's a light behind me that could really be glary. Okay. All right. So I'm going to put this stick, same stick I took out of the sewing machine, into my scanning cut. Okay. And I'm going to go, just get my little stick here. I'm going to retrieve my data. And it's on my stick. Now, th the machine sends the designs to the, the B pocket. Okay, so they're going to be in this B pocket when you go to look for them. And then you can see it says PHX. These were some that I did before. These were on my Luminaire. And this machine here, if I go down a couple more, I've been playing. So there's a bunch of them in here. So, okay. These mach the these are the designs. I just, I did a whole bunch of different ones. So, okay. I actually, you know what? This is my older machine. So they, they aren't in the B pocket. Let me go look again. I don't think these are in the B pocket. These are in here. They're right here. So I've got an older machine. So the P some of the PHC machines just put them out on the stick. So the ones that you were seeing in the B pocket here were from my Luminaire. So the Luminaire created the B pocket, and these are all from my Luminaire. Same, the same designs. I did the same ones, okay? But this machine, I forgot, this machine just puts them out. So if I go down on my stick here and look, here's the PHC. Okay, so this machine creates what they call a PHC, my older one. The newer ones create PHX. This machine reads both, okay? So that there's that one, and here's the roses, okay? It will also read the PESs. I don't like to cut directly from the PES. It will do that. But I have found that it literally cuts the design. So... At the beginning of the design, you know how our machine goes up and down and ties off and then goes and then comes back and ties off? Well, it'll do that. It'll actually cut like that. And if I change the color of the cut line of the 
the design to what I just did, it doesn't do that little cutting business or that like it, it doesn't tie on and tie off at the beginning and the end. So I don't really like to cut from PES files, but you can see that it will read it. See, it's coming up in the machine. Okay. So these PHCs are the ones that I just created. So I'm just going to grab this one. Okay. There's all those little designs, those little, those little daisies. This is what they look like when they're cut out. So I'll hold it up here. Okay. And I'm just going to, at this point, I'm going to tell it that I want it to be an applique. And look, there it is. It's reading that color because it knows what it is. And I'm going to tell it OK. I'm going to leave it the exact size it is. And then I would set it and I'm ready to sew. The only thing about this, and I can show you this if you want me to, you can let me know if you want me to. I will show you, you can see. This is all, all of those are grouped together. If I go in to, whoops, second here, that's not what I wanted. If I go into edit and object edit, see, I don't have the option of getting anything ungrouped. This button here is the group and ungroup button, and it does not give me that option. This is not the native format for this machine. It is not an FCM. That's what this machine reads. So when you do this with the color business on the machine and bring it over, you can't get into each individual piece. Now, when I cut this tonight, it takes a long time to cut with the rotary blade, and I don't want to cut more than one at a time. So what I did is I took it into the software, and if you would like me to show you this while it's cutting, you can let me know. Um, I can show you what I did is I just opened up my... my um, what I did is I say, I'm sorry, I saved this design to my machine and then I sent it to my software wirelessly and just ungrouped it. That's all I had to do. So I can save this design in my machine right here. Okay, I can save it right here in the machine. And then I can actually bring it up and I can send it to the software wirelessly. And then I can change the... Um, I can change it to, no, I can't. Yeah, I can set it wirelessly. So um, I can change it then to um, a, I can ungroup it. That's all I did. So I am going to use an ungroup design tonight when we're doing this because it does take a while for this to, whoops, second here, I keep hitting okay, I have to hit okay. So I actually saved an ungrouped design in my machine here. Go back here a couple, couple of pages. Okay, so this one here I think is ungrouped. So if I touch, this is the roses. So if I touch these, see, these I, are should be ungrouped. Nope, this is the group set. I have some that are ungrouped in here, I know. <laughs> we'll, get them, we'll get them yet, I promise. Okay, let me go back to my stick. And, oh, I put them on the stick. Here's the flowers ungrouped and the rolled roses ungrouped. So I did that, the ungrouping in the software, okay? So, like, if I, I'm going to go ahead and grab this one because I did this one in the software. So now, if you touch this, whoops, go to the next screen. See how I can get each one of these. I should have been, been able to get each one of these by themselves a second. It's being can cantankerous. I saved it as ungrouped, so it should be ungrouped. But, you know, nothing's been working for me today, so it may just be, I may just have to do it for you anyway. <laughs> oh, well, let's see. Wow, that is really weird because I had it saved in the machine, I thought, as ungrouped or on the stick. Hmm, interesting. Well, let's go back and see if it's in this machine. I swear that I did this un ungrouped. I don't know why it's being being mean. Let's go down here a couple. I've got a bunch of stuff in here, don't I? Okay, so here's these. Let's see if these are ungrouped. Oops, I always have to go to the next screen. Oh, there we go. This is the ungrouped one. Okay, so here's one. So you can see I can touch these all, but I ungrouped these in the software. So I must not have saved the one, the right one on my stick, okay? So I'm going to use this one for the class tonight because I want 
to just cut one because it takes a while. Okay. And then we'll cut one of the roses. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to get rid of a couple of these. You get rid of a couple of these. See how I can delete them now? Before that, they were all in one piece. So when it comes in as an applique design, you know, from my PES file, it, it doesn't understand that it can be done like that. And you have to do the rest of the stuff in the software. Okay. Okay. So here's the one I want. And these are the ones I had ungrouped in the software. Okay. Most of you have used the software a little bit and it's very easy. All you got to do is open it and then right click and ungroup. That's all there is to it. It's very simple to ungroup things. And then you can just save it back to your stick or back to your machine. Okay. So that's why I'm going to do it this way. Okay. So there's our single little flower and I'm going to hit the add button and let me go get um the little rose i should have the rose in here too ungrouped and we'll do one rose okay i always have to do a little bit of so, so often i have to do just a teeny bit of software stuff the machine doesn't read things the same way as um at you know um it might since Cindy, I don't know. I don't use BES. So yes, I think it will. But I'm not sure if you can work with the FCMs in there or not. I work with the FCMs in the Canvas workspace software. I'm not working with it in the in the um, digitizing software. Because I know you can make appliques out of B, out of FCMs in BES, but I don't know that you can actually work with the files in there. I go to Canvas Workspace with that. So, okay, let's see if this is the ungrouped one. Hopefully it is. Oops, got to hit the button one more time. Yep, so this is the ungrouped one. So here's one rose. We're going to get rid of this rose. So we don't have so many things to cut tonight, okay? That makes sense to everybody? I'm so I'm sorry if I'm being being confusing. I thought I had everything right where I wanted it, but you know how things just never go the same way you think they're going to go. <laughs> so, um, okay, so I've got one rose and I've got one little daisy. And that's what I want to cut tonight, okay? And then I'm going to do two different colors of fabric. So we'll put the fabric on the mat and then we'll scan it, okay? So we're, we need to talk about this rotary blade a little bit. All right, so let me go get my stuff here. Okay, you, you don't get a whole lot with the rotary blade, just so you know. And there is a manual for it. So this is the little manual. I'm going to pull, the, pull this down. I'm going to pull my computer over here so I can see a little bit better. Okay, so here's the manual for the, um, for the rotary blade. And you can go to the... Um, if you just go look up your scan and cut number, like I've got a 330D, all of the little manuals for all the accessories are there with the machine. So like I Google um, scan and cut uh, SDX two or 330D, and then all of the manuals are there too. So that's where I got this little manual. There's just a few pages, so they don't give you a whole lot, okay? And you also get this little piece of paper. That's about all you get is a little piece of paper with it, okay, in the box. And you get, though, but you do get some really nice designs. And this is the little design card. And this is actually designs. It's not like a premium function. So you have to activate this in Scan and Cut Canvas. And it's it's designs, not a premium function. So I got this and I, des I, I uh, activated this card, okay? And the rotary, and you can buy extra blades for the rotary, um, the rotary blade. You can't get the rotary blade without. It's like a pack, and you can only buy it in a in a in a like a kit with the designs. You can't get just the holder part by itself. You can get the blade by itself, okay? But you can't get the whole. You can't get the the holder thing by itself. So that's about all you get with it. It's just, you know, it's this piece of paper and the kit, then the designs. So I've activated my designs and it explains a little bit, you know, how to, 
download and there's a little bit on here, but there's not much. It's just basically right here. <laughs> there's just not very much on here. Okay. All right. So I did that. And so basically we do need to do some settings on the machine though, to use this. How much is the, the blade? The blade is, I think it's $50. You get the blade, the blade and blade holder and you get the um, designs. And I think it's the kits $50. So, and they are just so you know, I'm, I'm so sorry. I was hoping by now they'd be in. They're on back order. They've been on back order for a little while. I'm hoping they'll be coming in pretty soon. So just so you know, I don't have any right now, but I will be getting them, okay? So they'll be coming in. It's just, things are really random and I never know, because I, I set, that's why I set this for, for June, at the end of June, because I figured we'd have them by then, but they still haven't come in, so I'm so sorry. But at least you'll know now if it's what something that you would want, okay? Okay, so I do need to go in um, and it is okay. So just so you know, this is, I did some highlights here. Um, the kit is compatible only with the SDX models. So in other words, the 225, the, the three, the 230 D, the 300 series, just the DX models, not the older CMs. Okay. So, so these are only available for the DX. Um, the rotary auto blade is suitable for cutting materials up to one millimeter thick. Okay. So you could probably cut, yeah, obviously felt, um, maybe some of that, um, the foam, stuff like that. And this is cool because it rolls over the material that you're cutting instead of um, cutting through it with the blade. So I think it's going to work a lot better for different things. Okay. Um, so the one thing that you need to do if you haven't done this, is you're, you need to update the software of the cutting machine to the latest version. So that's one of the very first things you have to do. So let's go up here to the machine so you know where that is, okay? What about wool? Yes, Jackie, it would cut wool as well. I think this would work better for wool than I cut wool with a heat and bond light on it. And I think it would cut wool better with this with the rotary blade. I just didn't have any to try it, but I bet it will, because the wool was always also rather fibrous, and it would kind of pull it around the mat a little bit. That's why I stabilized it with heat and bond, and that seemed to work the best. Okay, so let's go into the settings here. I don't know if it'll let me all the way into where I need to go. We may have to go get these again. You have to bear with me to find my designs again. So I wanted to go into the settings first. So we're going to go back to the main screen here and we're going to check our, our um, current version. And the current version is 1.62. So it's going to be down towards the bottom in the settings. I hit the little wrench. Do it again, the little wrench down here. And I'm going to go down towards the bottom of the settings. I think it's up one page. Whoops. It's up one page, I think, where it says version. So if you use this blade, do you still have to put heat and bond on the back of your material? Um, depending on what you're using it for, yes. Um, if you use some uh, Terial Magic, then no. I would still tell you to use a starch, even, even with this blade. You may not need to have it be as stiff, but um, if you're using it for applique, then yes, you'd still want to put it on. So my version is 1.62 and you can go, you can hit that button where it says version, just hit the button and you can either do it manually with your USB stick or you can do the wireless transfer. And I normally do mine with the wireless transfer. Okay. So, and the, normally the machine will come up and tell you up here at the top if you need an um, upgrade. All right. So it is important with this, you have to have it upgraded at least to 1.6 for it to work. And the most current version is 1.62. Okay. Because this was something came out about, about a year ago, I think. So, all right. So that was the first thing that you have to do. There's a couple things we have to do in order to get this to work. Okay. Um, let's see. I activated um, my pattern collection. So the next little section in the little manual here. Yes, the manu the the, uh, the wireless is very easy. So, um, the little manual here, the next thing it tells you to do, you know, is go to Canvas Workspace and do the pattern collection. 
So I did that also. This is the little pattern collection. So I did that. Okay, so that was the, on page two and three. Okay, so I'm gonna keep going here. And it works into page four. So that talks about getting the pattern collection activated. All right. And I, I didn't really, I decided not to go into that because I didn't, I think most of you have done that at least once or twice. And it's very easy. Okay. So I like the little manual though, because it did tell you what to do and had it all written out. Okay. So I would tell you to go download this. Okay. But there are some settings in the machine that need to be changed in order to use the rotary blade. Okay, so there's some st settings that you probably have never used before that we need to do. Okay, so let me go back here to, we're still in the settings. One of the things we need to do is the cut mode for the rotary blade. So it, we're going to go back up. I'm just going up, up a little further here. Let's see, cut mode. we got to find the cut. Oh, here it is. Cut mode, rotary blade. Okay. And that is going to come in with the upgrade. So like if you have an upgraded, you won't have this there. So cut mode rotary blade, you want to set it on fine blade adjustments, improve the quality of the cutting results. Cutting will take longer to complete than the normal setting. And then normal, which, you, which would be right here, normal cutting is completed faster than with the fine setting is best suited for simple patterns. Okay, so obviously this little piece that I was doing right here, I would not call this a simple pattern. I would call this a pretty, pretty in detailed pattern. It's small and it's very, it's got a lot of detail in it. So this I did on fine. Okay, this probably, this one, the little rose, see how this one cuts out? I'm sure you can see it here. There we go. This one probably could have been done on normal and it might have cut out a little bit faster, okay? But I wasn't sure um, if I wanted to, to I, I knew I was gonna do them both on the same mat, so I cut these both out on fine, okay? So I'm gonna set mine on fine. And most people tell me that they've been using fine because they want it to make, they can do a little bit more complicated designs then, okay? Then the blade adjustment area. So see where it says blade adjustment area, rotary blade. I'm going to touch that. And we need to, it needs to be on, which adjusts the blade in the top part of the mat and inside the adhesive area also. So we're going to hit on. Okay. What kind of felt are you using, Cindy? I'm just using, uh, this is just plain old felt that I bought like it. Joann's or something. It's just a, a you know, the, the regular felt. It's not wool felt. Okay, so this needs to be on. Okay, set to off when cutting delicate materials such as lace, silk, and satin. So in my case, I am not cutting those things. It does give you some adjustments. So like I said, fine and normal. Okay, and then here, turn adjust the blade in the top part of the mat and inside the adhesive area and off adjust the blade only at the top. So they say to use that if you're doing very delicate materials like, or, like silk, lace, very delicate stuff. Don't, don't you turn that to the off position. So you may want to print this manual out so you have these here, okay? And then the other thing is they talked about, I've never used this setting, is set the pattern interval to five to automatically adjust the pattern layout. So um, it is, I got that on, let's see. And this is the pattern interval. So we need to, I think we need to go down another page. Draw pressure. Can't remember where pattern interval was. Might've been up, let's see here. Pattern interval, it says, oh, here it is, pattern interval. Set the pattern interval to five to automatically adjust the pattern layout. So we're going to set this to five, okay? And I don't think there was an, I can't, I don't think there was any other um, instruction about that particular setting. So th that's why this little manual is very nice because it has everything written out for you. 
to do the adjustments because there were some things I had to turn on on the machine that I normally would not have. Where would you find the manual? Okay, Shannon, the manual, you, you need to, whatever machine you have, go, just go to Google and type in Brother SDX, mine's a 330, or sorry, a 230D. And then I usually type the word manual in at the end of that. And all the manuals, even for these kind of things, are there. It's very hard to find anything on the Brother website. So I just go to Google and I would type in Brother SDX. 230D manual. And so type in whatever your model number is, and then um, you should be able to find all the manuals. And these are all like the auxiliary matter manuals, and they're all going to be there too. I just have a really hard time finding anything on their website. Okay. So those were the things I highlighted with my machine. Okay. Now it's just talking about retrieving your patterns and all that. And I, we're, we're going to use a different pattern. So we already know what pattern we're going to do. I am same at the, oh, I know their website just is awful. They redid their website about almost two years ago and it's, it's terrible. I used to be able to find everything on the website. Now I, I have to Google everything. All right. So I'm happy with all my settings. I'm going to hit okay. All right. So now I'm going to try to find those designs that were re-ungrouped again, okay? And just everybody, anybody, just if you're interested in seeing me ungroup those in the software, let me know and I will share my screen while this is cutting. So let me know by typing, okay? And I'll do that if you want me to show you how I ungroup those. It's very simple. But I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to go back in because I had them ungrouped in my machine. Okay, all you do is bring them in, right click and ungroup. That's all there is to it. It's very simple. All right, so let's go down here towards the bottom. See if I can find those ungrouped ones again. I got lots of stuff in here. Let's see. I think it was this one was ungrouped. This is it's the second one. Let's see. Maybe not. Oh, that one's grouped. Must have been the first one. Sorry, guys. I'll get it yet. I promise. So, Phil, oh, you do you want me to watch do the software? Do you think we will notice difference with the rotary blade? Yes, I noticed a big difference. It cut very well, and I've never really been able to cut felt without putting a heat and bond on the back of it. Um, so this is very easy to cut. Uh, when I get a little closer here, I'll give you, we'll, we'll find the right one yet, I promise. Oh, here we go. Here's my ungroup one. So here's this one. So I'm going to just delete some of these. Okay. But I can show you. I've got the stick and I'll just take the stick out of the machine and we'll, whoops. I'm just going to delete so I only have one. We're only going to cut one flower because it takes a little while. But the thing I like about StreamYard, see, I can actually share my screen with you in the same um, in the same live because I've always had to do this as a separate video in the past, so I can do that this time. Okay, so there's my little my little daisy, and then I'm gonna go get add. I'm gonna go get my roses. See if I can find the right one here. <laughs> so we get ready to cut here. All right, let's see. Let's see. I think it was. I think it was this one. Here's that. Nope. This is the grouped one. Well, we'll, we'll, we'll. I promise we'll get it. Must have been the first one. All right. So I hit OK. Hit Add again. Do you offer scanning cut class? Make up. I. I do scan and cut classes mostly Shannon online and I do and I will be doing sh scan and cut classes once a once a month. I'm going to try to do once a month as much as I can because um, people have been asking for scan and cut classes and I have a lot on YouTube already. So there's probably 20 videos for scan and cut classes on YouTube. So you can go to sew along with Jan under brother scan and cut and you can see tons of other videos. 
So it wasn't that one. It must be this one. That's the, there we go. I've been playing around with this. So there we go. Woohoo. Found it. All right. So normally, if you're just going to cut all of these, just cut them all. You know, like if you're going to do the little, um, the little pillows, you can just cut them as they were because you need two roses and you need uh, four. You only needed four of these instead of six, but you could just cut all six of them and you don't have to worry about ungrouping them. But I just wanted to cut one because <laughs> they were, they were, it takes a while to cut and I didn't want it to, to be cutting for a half an hour. So, okay. So there's my little rose and there's my little daisy. All right. So at this point, I'm going to take my blade and I'm going to put this rotary blade in place of my regular blade in my machine. If I don't drop it on the floor, there we go. Okay. It's a big blade. And I, it's funny. This is the weirdest blade about going in to the machine. So I might actually put it in a second. It, it's, it's just odd the way it goes in. So if I hit cut first and I load my mat, then we'll put the blade in. All right. So the other thing I wrote up on my little sheet here was use standard mat for your felt. I'm using felt. And just so you know, felt is very messy. And it leaves lots of marks on the mat. So, so try to use maybe an older mat that you can clean. Because I, I am going to use this older mat. And it's kind of my icky, messy mat. And I'm just going to use this one for the felt. Because the felt does make kind of a mess is what I've been finding. Okay. And then let me cut this down a little bit so it'll fit on the same one. Here. So this, I got yellow for my daisy and I'm going to cut this kind of pinky purple for my rose. Okay. And this is an old, like I said, this is my old mat that I've been, I bet this is one of my original mats. I've had it forever and it's dirty and messy and I keep it, I clean it and re-stick it and, and you notice that I was using, I don't know if you can see me, I'm using my little brayer to give it, make sure that it's stuck down well to the mat. Do not use the fabric mat. Ask Jan how she knows. I have ruined my, my uh, fabric mat. The felt sticks all over it. I've ruined a fabric mat. It is now not sticky enough for fabric. So do not use a fabric mat. Use this like I said, a fairly sticky, you know, older mat. And I'm just going to use this one. I'm going to mark it felt at the bottom. And I'm going to, like at the bottom here, I'm just going to write felt on here. And I'm only going to use this for felt. Because that way I don't have to worry about it messing up one of my other mats. Okay. So I've got my two pieces of fabric on here. All right. Yeah, I was bummed because, you know, those fabric mats are expensive. So um, I was very bummed. All right. So now I'm going to, this has always been such a weird blade. It's very long and it's funny because it doesn't always go into the machine very well. And I don't know why. It's like the machine doesn't want it. I don't know. It's very odd. See if I can get it to go in. There it goes. Okay, I finally got it. Push it down, and then it goes. Okay, I think we're good. So I got it in there. It was just being cantankerous. Everything's been cantankerous tonight. So, okay, there we go. Got it in there. All right, make sure this is all the way down. All right, so now we're going to do a scan. Let's go back to the scanning page here and let's scan so we know where this fabric is. Whoops. Hit, us, hit start, Jan. So it's going to scan. I'll turn my computer around just a little bit more so I can see. I love my scanning cut. I've been, I'll show you some of the other stuff that I've been doing on my scanning cut. I've been enjoying it. 
Okay, so here's my purple and here's my yellow. And we're gonna look at it up here on the screen. So I want my my rose on my purple. So we'll pull it over here. And let's see what happened to my little, uh, little, not sure where the little daisy went. <laughs> Can't see it on there. Somewhere. A second, edit. Let's see if I can find the, there it is, it's up here. We're gonna pull it down on the yellow. Sometimes you have to select with the little, if you can't see your designs, select with the little selection tools in the in the edit screen. I Sometimes I can't see them, you know, they're black and if it gets on a dark color, sometimes it's hard to see. The screen's pretty small, you know. Okay, so there's the daisy. So I got the daisy down there on my yellow and the rose is up here on the pink. So I'm gonna hit okay. And there's really nothing more to do. Other than, you know, we got the settings right. We looked at the manual. We got the settings right. And now we're just ready to cut. So that, you know, you can see that the, these are kind of where the fabric is. And I'm going to hit please select. And I'm going to hit cut. Now I do have my cut speed set at three. That's usually where I cut. My, I cut. Um, the machines default at five now, which is kind of fast. So I usually leave mine on three. And you can see it's going to take about seven minutes to cut. And then the pressure is on auto. And I've got this. This is an auto blade, just like the other one. Um, but it's a rotary blade inside. So I'm going to hit start. And we're going to watch it. And, and it's really fun to watch actually cut because it does all this wild stuff. Sometimes it starts shooting the mat in and out. And it's, it's actually kind of fun. So it goes back and forth a lot because it has to rotate that little blade, see? So it is pretty cool. And that's why it takes a little longer, I think, because of the way um, it has to rotate the blade to all the different shapes for the, for the cutting. Okay, so do, do people want me to show you the software quickly? I can do that while this is cutting and then we can come back, okay? And watch it cut a little bit more. So let me do this. I'll switch over here. Give me a second. Actually, I think I might be able to leave this on and then also share my screen just a second here. Um, share my screen. Give me a second. I'm going to go log in first. Let me log into my account first. It's uh, canvasworkspace.brother.com. And you log in. I like to use the one online. I don't use the one um, on my computer. I don't care for that one very much. I use the one online. So I just go to my browser and type in canvasworkspace.brother.com and log in. I'm going to put my stick. I took the stick out of the machine. All right, so let's see here what you're seeing. Give me a second back here and I'm going to you're still seeing the machine cut and I'm going to go ahead and share my screen and it will show let me show you the screen hopefully whoops and it'll still show the machine cut in a little bit okay all right so hopefully you can see this I'm going to show you this. It gives me a second here. It'll, it'll show me on my, my computer in a second, okay? So here's the machine cutting over here on the left. I'm just going to leave it so you can watch it because it's kind of wild the way it cuts, okay? And sometimes it starts shooting the mat in and out, and it's really wild, so, okay. So here's my Canvas workspace. And again, this is the one on the browser. This is the one I use. I like to go, I like this one. There's some downfalls to this one. And there's downfalls to the one on this computer. I think the one that's, that's downloadable is much harder to learn to use. So if you're not used to using um, software, I think this one's much harder to use. Uh, the one on the computer that you download is much harder to use. Um, this is very easy. So I'm just going to click New. And I think I'm going to, just a second, let me switch my camera over to just so that I'm talking right at you just a second. You may not be able to hear me as well. I think you might. Can you hear me okay? 
I put this camera so I don't have to switch the camera. Everybody hear me all right? Hopefully you can. All right, so I've got my Canvas workspace open on my on my desktop, and I am going to go to up here to the top row, and there's a little button that says SVG. Everybody's hearing me? Good. So here's my SVG, and I'm going to click that button. And what it's going to allow me to do is to select those um, files. So what I did is I created and I saved my PES files. I saved them in the machine. Remember those files you saw in the machine? That's the one I have to take to the machine, to my computer. Because if you don't, the one that is a uh, PES or a PHC or a PHX, the computer software will not read those. Okay, so I saved them in my machine and then back to my stick. And that's what I'm taking to my software because that is an FCM. As soon as you save it in the machine, it's an FCM file, which is what the scan and cut reads. Okay, so it's on my stick. And up here on the screen, you should be able to see, I'm going to go to my stick now and find those designs. So I've got PHCs. We'll see, it won't read those. And I'm down here, it says cutting file for scanning cut, cutting file for scanning cut, cutting file for scanning cut. So these are the cutting files that I saved from my machine back to my stick. All right. So let's, it doesn't give a name. So let's just, I'm just going to grab two, see which one it is here. And I'm going to click OK. Oh, that's the little daisy. So there's the little daisies. And it's all six of them. So you can see when I click on this that all of them are together. All I have to do to ungroup them is right click and click ungroup. And now I can get to each one individually. All right. And this is then what I did. Did you see the machine do the little the little weirdo thing? See, it's doing this, <laughs> it's doing this little like dance over here. Um, so now at this point, I would send this back to the machine. I could hit download and scan and cut transfer. And now it's back at, on my machine where I can, gra I can grab it. All right. The other one will be the same way. Ooh, look, we're done. We're done. So if I want to get the other one, I can also save this in my, in my projects. I may have already done it. I may not save this one. Yeah, I saved mine. They're here in my project. So I'm not going to save these. But if I wanted to do another one, I'm just going to delete these for now. Hit that SVG number again. And then I'm going to choose my file and go get the other one. It was number three was the other one. And click OK. And then there's the two roses. All right, and I can click it and see it's all grouped together. And if I right click, right click, I can ungroup. And now I can get to each one individually. All right, and then I could send this to my machine as well, wirelessly. Okay, so hopefully that helped you a little bit. You do have to, and I'll show you again on, on the machine here, that you do have to um, save it back to the machine and use that file to send to the software because the software does not read PES or those PHC files. It does read FCM files and SVG files and stuff. Okay. All right. So give me a second. I'm going to stop sharing my screen. And let me go back over here. Give me a second. I'm just going to log out of my account. One less thing running would probably be good. Okay. So what do you think? Do you think, do you think this cut? Should we see if it cut? So this is the rose up here. All right, let's see what happens here. I'm going to pull this up and see what happened. Ooh, look at there. Something happened. Isn't that awesome? Look at there. There's the, there's the rose. 
What do you think? Did a good job. Thought it did a very good job. And then this one down here. I don't know if you can see it very well. I'll pull it up. So you can kind of see where it's cut. It's cut right here. So I'm just going to pull this up. And you can see you don't really need a really super sticky mat. Now there's a little teeny spot right there that didn't cut very well. But this has got those little deep little curves in it, you know. So, you know, keep just have a little pair of scissors. You might just need to have a little clip. There's just one little spot on it that didn't cut very well. And I noticed it's kind of wonky looking. So we'll just take it and give it a little nip. There. Okay. Whoops, I, did. I missed it. I don't have my glasses on. I should have brought my glasses down here tonight. They're, my glasses are never where I want them. Have you ever noticed that? They're never where you want them. There you go. So there's the little daisy one. All right. So see how that's pretty intricate. That's why I chose fine because I figured it may probably wouldn't cut if on normal. I didn't think it would cut. And maybe it would cut a little faster on the normal one instead of fine. But um, I think, yes, fabric. And, and see, the reason I chose Pam, the reason I chose felt is that I've never really been able to get really good luck cutting felt on this machine. I have cut felt. The way I did it is I put heat and bond light on the back of the felt and I stick it right side up on a, on a standard mat. And that's the only way I've ever been able to cut felt because the problem is with the blade, the regular blade, you know, it's pushing it around. And this is not the most stable stuff in the world and it just scooches all over the place, all right? So that's why I chose felt because felt uh, fabric is much better. Um, you, I would use, still use, if you're doing applique, obviously you're gonna want heat and bond light on it. I still would cut it probably face down. That's the way I've usually cut um, applique fabrics. I put the heat and bond, you know, and it's up. And then um, if you wanted to do the um, Terial Magic, if you don't want the heat and bond on there, um, Terial Magic makes it, it's an, it's an exceptionally stiff starch. And then you can starch that and then it would still be more stable. Fabric is not stable like paper. So I still probably would tell you to, to, to stabilize it a little in some manner, just to give it some body so that it doesn't scoot on you, okay? But this is so much better because it's not pushing it. You know, the regular blade's going to push it around. And this rolls over it just like a rotary cutter does. So it's basically like a little teeny tiny rotary cutter. And I think it does do a good job. I've been exceptionally happy with everything I've cut out. I mean, I think it's been working great. So, yes, yeah, so regular fabric would be great. And I will, I'll, we'll do another thing with it. We'll cut something with it and we'll do some regular fabric. But... The reason I chose the felt is that this we have to have these for our little um, pillows. So, and I've always wanted to cut felt and I've never had good luck cutting felt. So I went ahead and un, um, unloaded the mat. And let me show you quickly also then here what I did. You know, when I took my, just a second, let me eject the stick here for my computer. Maybe if I can reach. I have a hard time with the USB. It's back kind of a long ways. Okay, so what I did is when I retrieved those patterns, you know, that we just used off my stick. Well, let's get the ones off the stick so you can see. Remember, these are the ones that we produced in the machine tonight, PHC. Okay. There's the design that it's going to cut and this would be the, as fast as you could do it without having to ungroup them okay so if i hit set the way i did this to take it to the machine then is i went ahead and hit save at this point and saved it in the machine or you could save it right back to the stick and it saves it as an fcm that's the design that you would take then on the stick to the software Okay. And I could do the same thing with the other one. That's how I did it. I just had to save it because it has to be the right format for the software to think about it. All right. So again, we can go get that design because my machine produced those. Oops. 
There we go. PHCs. There it is. There's the, the little roses. Okay. And I can hit OK. And when I get to this next screen, I can save back to the stick. And that's what I sent to my software. I think you can actually, let me see if it will actually let me send it. It might actually let me save it back to the, you see what it, let, if it lets me do this. Yes. So it did let me save it direct to the software because right here, it did let me, because it produced an FCM as it was going over. Okay. So that is, that is what you could do that as well. You could either put it on a stick or use the wireless because it would go back from here and it would become an FCM as on its way over. Okay. And I think it's going to show up in my soft, in my, let me see if it shows up in my, I can't remember if I did this, Lynn and I were playing with this one night, what worked and what didn't work. And I can't remember if the wireless transfer worked properly because of it being a, oops, because of it being a uh, PES file originally. I can't remember if it w worked or not. So I'm just logging back in again to see because I can't remember. Let's see if it comes back in because it should send. Normally what it does is, yes, it did. So what it does is it sends it back to it sends it back to your projects. So if you hit this button instead of this button, when you're doing the sending after you've saved it, it will save it to the USB or it will save it back to the software, but it then becomes an FCM, okay? So you have to have the machine to save it as an FCM for you. Um, this one, um, yeah, so it did, it did save it back. And th when this one came in then, it came in un, you know, grouped up and I can right click on it again and ungroup it just like I did, okay? So I forget, I always forget that that button's there because I've always saved everything on a USB. For years we had to because we didn't have the wireless and now I don't think about it, but it, but it does go wireless. So just hit save and then hit this button here and then it will slide it right to your software. Okay. And then you can ungroup it that easy. So that's how I did it. All right. So now we need to show, I need to show you how to do these flowers, right? We'll, we'll do them again in the class, but I want to show you how to do the flowers. So give me a second here. I'm just going to get rid of my software so I can see what I'm doing. Okay. Oh, yeah. Lynn, Lynn and I did the, did the flowers one night. The USB extender. Um, Cindy, I'm not positive on the scan and cut that it's going to work. The scan and cut's a little finicky about stuff, and I'm not real hip on those extenders because they're this is not a computer. So I don't do those extenders. The scan and cut, I've never, I don't know if it even works. Some some stuff just doesn't work the same with the scan and cut. So I even have trouble with USB sticks. So, all right, so let's do, let's do the rows first. So I had to figure out a way to make these. And, you know, I tried my, my, um, I tried my little, uh, <laughs> my little quilling tool, but you know, this won't fit in the little slot because it's too thick. Okay. So I thought, well, I got to come up with something else. So I found some of these cool tweezers. These are those reverse action tweezers. You know, you push them in to open them instead of, you know, pushing them in and to close them. So these are those reverse action ones. So then it makes me have like a really large slot for you for a uh, quilling tool. So when you make these little flowers, and by the way, um, the spring showers quilt that Kimberbell did has a whole gob of flowers in it. They did a bunch of stuff with the with the felt flowers. And you can do the same thing with these, with those. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to grab this on the inside. Oop, you know what? I forgot one thing though. I forgot to plug my glue gun in the second. It's right behind me. I'll plug it in while I, while we're doing this and then it will be ready. Got to move some stuff out of the way, though, just a second. I finally got a second a glue gun so that I could have it in the basement so I didn't have to run up, the, run up the stairs every time I wanted a glue gun. 
I was running up and down the stairs. I think I've been up and down about 20 times today. <laughs> Because I go, I've been working down here. Okay, so I'm going to grab my little rose. And this is the, the, the base. Okay, so we're going to start on the other end. Like this. And we're going to grab the, the inside edge with the tweezers. And then we can shut them. Okay, and now this is our quilling tool. So we're just going to twirl the rose around the little tweezers. Like this. And I'm just trying to keep it, you know, even on the bottom. This is kind of a plain rose. It's not real fancy. It's just kind of a plain one. Okay. And then I'm going to get off, when I get down towards the end, I'm going to open the, the tweezers just a little bit and pull it off. Okay. Like that. And then what we're going to do, and I'm going to let the glue gun warm up a little bit more. I'll just set it down for a minute. We're going to put a little glue, hot glue down here, and we're going to glue the bottom down. Okay. Isn't that cute? All right, so give me just a second. I'll, I'll let the glue gun, it's not quite hot enough yet. So let's do this one. So this one's gonna be a little different. This one's gonna be done with a, um, we're gonna just do a little bit of hand sewing on this one. Oh God, and I even, I did manage to get the thread threaded because I didn't bring any glasses with me. <laughs> and then I need a button. So this one has a little button in the center, okay? So here's the little, the little daisy one that we cut out. Okay. And I'm just going to tie off on this end here. Tie a knot. You guys like crafting, you know, I've, I've done crafting stuff since I was a little kid and this has been so much fun to do like scan and cut things and make these flowers and different things. I just love to craft. So I'm going to then, you notice I have black thread just because I could see it and you could see it. So I'm just going to gather this real quickly across the bottom. I'm staying about an oh, eighth of an inch from the edge, the, the flat edge. So I'm just going to gather this. I got a double piece of thread in there. Like this. And this is how we're going to do our flowers for the little pillows. They're so fun. Now you know how to cut them out too. Like that. Okay. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to start gathering this. And then I'm going to put my thread in the same end where I started. I'm gonna put my needle in there so that I know where the start and stop is. Oops, I don't wanna grab that. And then I'm going to pull this together and just like that. So it's all tight. And then I'm gonna to go to the back, whoops and just tie it off. Hopefully I can see to do that. <laughs> I never have my glasses when I want them. Sometimes the doctor told me that eventually I'll just get to the point that I want to wear my glasses all the time. I don't really need glasses to, um, for, for distance. It's just for close up. Okay. So then I'm going to go ahead and that's why I use black thread because I wanted to put this little, you know, the little button in here. I love the scan and cut. Yeah, the scan and cut classes are so fun, much fun. It's just different. So I'm sorry I fumbled around a little bit tonight. I was having trouble. I thought I had everything right where I wanted it and I must have re... So I, I, I came out through the front here and I'm going to get my little black button to put in the center here. And I just left my thread right in so I can just keep going here. And I think some of the buttons, let's see which hole I'm in, am, am I in here? Can't see. There we go. I'm going to go try to crisscross them here. Um, some of the, some of the flowers are white and some are, are yellow. So for the little thing. So we'll do two colors of flowers for the pillows. But I thought this would, you know, kind of kill two birds with one stone. Show you a little bit about the rotary blade. And then we can cut out our flowers and make our flowers. 
and then go this way, hopefully. Oop, there we go, I hit it. So hopefully the, the software didn't, didn't confuse you too much. If you need me to, I could just do a little video on just the software. Because like I said, I normally send it back to a USB stick and use that, but I forget that you can just send it wirelessly to the machine or you know to your computer. So if I would just think about that, you can do that. All right. So there's that. I got it tied off, and then I'm just going to turn it to the back. Make a knot, and then we'll just tie this off. And there's our little daisy. They're so cute, and I just was so fun. And and the way these are done in the instructions, if you've seen the book, the way these are done in the instructions is that it, it actually, you know, sews it out in the hoop, and then you have to take scissors, and you have to cut out all those little bumpies, you know, the little bumps. <laughs> you have to cut cut those all out with a pair of scissors along the stitch line, and I'm like, ah, uh, no. So I said, I have technology that can do that for me. So that's what I did. All right, so there's the little daisy. I've got a couple more over here. So I made the little daisies. They're cute. All right. And then this one, oh, I think my glue gun's hot now. So this one, what we're going to do is leave it, you know, leave it all rolled up. And then I'm going to turn it over here. And you want to put some hot glue on the base of it. Oops, maybe if I can get my, this is my new glue gun, so it's a little bit wonky yet. Sometimes when they're new, they're kind of funny. There we go. And then I'm going to turn this over and then lay that little round part down on the base. And then if you turn it over, you can kind of squish it down in there so it holds it down nice. And there's a the little rose, see? Oops. I've got a hot glue hair on my arm. There's the little rose. So aren't those cute? We cut those out with our rotary blade. So then we can, that's that. But I, I just really love to cut. I would always have loved to cut felt. I wanted to cut felt and like wool felt and different things. And it was just so hard to do it because the, um, the blade just squished it all around and you could never get it. If you put it on like a, the, the high tech adhesive sheets are on the, the fabric mat. It was so, you couldn't get it off. I mean, it wouldn't come off. And then if you, um, if you didn't put it on that, it would just scoot it around the mat. So this way it's not scooting it around because the blade's not going through it. Isn't that awesome? So yeah, so I thought that was really fun. So we are gonna do another scan and cut class. Um, and um, so I love these tweezers. So if you want to do some of these flowers, see if you can find the re these reverse action tweezers. They're called reverse action. And th these are the long pointy ones, not the not the crooked ones, you know, the ones that bend over. So you want these. But these work great as a quilling tool for felt. So I finally found the right tool. It took me a while. Um, so we're going to do some more. Um, we're going to do some another scan and cut class in July. And I just posted it. And so I'm, I'm sh I'll show you what I've been learning. I've been learning about card making. I've always wanted to make cards and, and I'm learning how to make cards. And something I saw, um, it was um, Julie Faithan Balzer does a lot of scan and cut classes online. Where did you get the tweezers? I got these in Cedar Rapids at a place called Scrap Mania, but I've seen them all over. You just need to look up reverse action uh, reverse action um, tweezers. And they probably have them on Amazon or different places like that. The software. I have software um, classes. I actually have a couple on YouTube, Colleen, um, on the software. So you might want to go because I, I do use software. And there's several classes up there on the software. So go to my YouTube channel and go to the playlist brother scan and cut and there are more and yes i will do more scan and cut um software classes i love the the software and so we'll do we'll do some more i promise okay so here's my little card so this is what we're going to do in july we're going to learn to do something called heat embossing 
and heat embossing um, is done with a, so this was done with a, a embossing pen. So you take a, it's a special pen that is like sticky, almost like glue. It's not really glue, it's, it's ink, but it's like sticky. And then you put embossing powder, you know, powder on it. And then you use a heat tool to melt it. So this is a silver one. So I did a silver one. I think that's the one I put up on the, on the group. And then I added a little sentiment down here. And I'm going to show you how to, you know, do some of the cutting on this. I did the whole thing on my scan and cut, cut the whole thing out. This little, this cute little tag is in the scan and cut. This little cute little tag with the, the double ended tag. And these are stamps. These are just rubber stamps. So I'm learning to stamp too. And I just did these with rubber stamps. And then I did a little thing on the inside. So I'll, I'll tell you how big everything is. So I did, this is a rubber stamp. Okay. And then I did, you know, like a pretty, pretty red on the back. Okay. And then this one was gold. Now this little design I put up on the group in the Dropbox. So it's up there and I gave you the link. This is a design that I did so I could give this design to you. I just drew this little squiggle tree. Okay. And um, this one I put the little sentiment into. All right. So we're going to do this in, this will be July. So we're going to do a little Christmas in July. And then um, we'll do these the the third week in July. Well, let's see. It'd be the third, I think there's five Saturday or Sundays. So it'd be the fourth and fifth. So this one's going to be the fourth. And then the fifth one is going to be um, a software class, a Christmas design for the software. Okay. So we'll do that in July. Aren't these fun? I, I try to do every, I try to get, make it just fun and interesting. The, the rotary blade really is cool. And I'm so sorry we don't have them in stock. I, they, they should be coming. They're $50 um, for the forum. I, I don't think they've changed price. I think they're still $50. Oh, yeah, that Mylar Valentine card was fun. We, we could do Mylar again, too. That would be fun for Christmas. We could make a Christmas card with the Mylar. Do a Mylar design in the software again. Mylar was really fun. So, okay. So this is going to be, so I, I, again, like I said, hopefully we'll see them sometime in July. So you won't have to wait too long to get one. And they're, they're supposed to be coming evidently, but everybody's out of them and we're not the only ones. Um, and then of course you can, you can change the blades. So like this just kind of unscrews here. And then you can, you can actually buy just this little, see the little blade. You can see it's just got the little rotary on it. And you can just buy just the blade and replace it in the in the in the blade holder. So, okay. All right. So, give me a second here. I'll just switch my camera up real quick so I can say goodbye to everybody. And oops, let me get my microphone so I can talk right at the microphone. So, so that's my light up there. See how bad it is. Um, Colleen, if you could, you can text me or you can email me and yes, I will, as soon as I come in, I have a couple other people's names. I will get it to you. So if you want the blade, just let me know by email or, um, that's the easiest way. Once you email me at the store and then I'll put you on the list. Okay. All right. So thank you for hopefully everything went okay. It seemed to go okay, even though I'm downstairs here and, uh, we'll do another scan and cut in from the depths of my dad's basement uh, in July. So <laughs> thanks a lot, everybody. And uh, we'll be seeing now. Remember, next week is 4th of July weekend. So there's no class next Sunday. We're going to take a week off. OK, but there is class tomorrow night. We're going to finish up our um, Sweet Land of Liberty pillow. OK, so we'll we'll be to here tomorrow night. It's at seven. So Monday night's class is at seven. All right, we'll finish up Sweet Land of Liberty. I'm really anxious to get that one done. So, all right, thanks everybody. Have a good evening. Bye bye.